So ask for actual value of land here. So this function it, um, it's, it's basically going to ask the user for the actual value. And it's going to return the actual value that the user entered, right? So once it returns it, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to define a, va um, a variable in main and call it user value of property or something. User value of property. Uh, I don't know. Let's just, just say uh, user actual value of property it's it's fine and if the name is long it's fine you can change it to something shorter but I like to name it long sometimes so use the actual value of property is going to be what was returned from the s for actual value of um, keep on saying land let's change this to property so it makes sense the function name to property when we are calling it let's also call it the same thing Okay, so property. When we call this actual value of property function, it's going to go ahead and return what the user typed for the actual value of property and store it in actual value, and store it in the user actual value of property variable. So now we'll have it here. Okay, now let's go ahead and call the calculate assessment value. And the calculate assessment value, we know is going to need the actual value of property, which we have here as the user actual value of property. So let's go ahead and call the calculate assessment value and then it's going to need the um, actual value of property we have it stored in user actual value of property so let's go ahead and copy it and pass it in as an argument and we know that the calculate assessment value is going to go ahead and return the assessment value of property so once it returns it we need a place to store it so I'm going to go ahead and, and um, store it in a variable called um, assessment value of property It doesn't matter that the name here, this in this name here is the same as this name here. It doesn't matter because now these two functions don't see each other. What's in this function, you know, it, 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 it they don't see each other. They don't talk to each other. Each other. The variables. This this variable only works in this function. The scope of this variable only is only in this function, and the scope of this variable is only in this main function. They don't see each other. So when you create two names here, they are, they are two different things because they are in two different functions even though they're the same name. So it's not, it's not a problem. Now we're exceeding this line again, so I want to go ahead and break it somewhere around here. So I'm going to type in the backslash and hit enter. All right. So now we have the actual value here. We have the assessment value here. Now let's go ahead and calculate the property tax. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate, call the calculate property tax function. Um, and we know the property, we know the calculate property tax function is going to need the assessment value, which we have here as assessment value of property. So let's go ahead and pass it in the calculate property tax function. And we know the calculate property tax function is returning the property tax. So let's go ahead and create a variable called property, property tax. Um, it doesn't matter again if it's the same name, these two value, um, these two names don't see each other all right so i'm going to go ahead and create a I'm, I've, I've created a, a variable called property tax outside outside this function up in main to store what is being returned from the calculate property tax function all right so now we have all our de details all we have to do is just print it out let's go ahead and create a function since this fun this um ch chapter is all about functions let's go ahead and create a function that's going to just display the information let's create a function that's going to receive these values and just display them all right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a, a function called, def um, I'm going to define a function called print details. So print details is going to basically take three arguments, which is going, which is the user value of property. Now these names can be, can be, can be different. You can, these are just names re referring to the placeholders, the parameters for this function. So it can be, it can be different. I'm just using the same names. You know, it doesn't really make any difference. All right. So it's going to need a user value of property is going to need the assessment value of property and it's going to need the property tax and all it's going to do is just display them now i'm exceeding this line so i'm going to go ahead and break it here first let me put the colon here and break it somewhere around here backslash and hit enter 
Anytime you break a line, you have to type in the backslash. All right, in the print details function, let's go ahead and just print the details that were, that were just given to us in the function, or that, that is going to be given to us in the function. So let's go ahead and print a, a nice string and say assessment, uh, let's see, no, actual, actual value of um, property. And let's go ahead and concatenate it to the formatted version of the, the user actual value of property, which is which ha, which is going to be given to us. So I'm just going to call, copy it. The format function takes two arguments. It takes what you want to format, in this case, this value, and how you want it formatted. In this case, I want because user actual value of property is going to be a float, it's going to be a float. I want it formatted as a float here. I want it formatted as a float. I'm going to type in F to represent float. I also want it rounded to two decimal places, so I'm going to type in the precision, which is 0.2 in front of the F. So if I wanted to format it to three, three decimal places, I'll say 0.3. But I want it formatted to two decimal places, so I'll say 0.2. Also, since it's going to be a monetary value, I want it to be able to put commas where necessary. So if the amount is a million dollars, I want it to automatically put commas where necessary and, and, and display 1, 000, 000. If it's $5,000, I want it to display five comma zero 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 so i wanted to automatically put commas where necessary so i'm going to put a comma in front of the precision and in front of the f so basically a comma here in front of before the precision also i want to put a dollar sign since it's a monetary value in front of it this way all right so over here i have exceeded the line again so i'm going to break it somewhere around here uh, i can't i don't think i can put it in the formal function but it's possible perhaps i can but i'm going to put it here after the plus Type in a backslash and hit enter. All right, I'm not done with this display. I'm going to go ahead and concatenate it with a new line character. I don't know if I talked about it yet, I didn't. All right, so the new line character is a backslash n. So when the interpreter sees the backslash n, it's going to take the position from where it's at, the current line, it's at the current position it's at to the next line. So anything that comes after this new line character is going to be displayed on that next line. Okay, so when the interpreter sees this new line character, it's going to basically display anything that comes after this new line character on that on that next line it's going to shift the position from where it's at at the moment to the next line anything that comes after the anything that comes after this new line character is going to be displayed on that next line all right so this is basically going to create a line break for us the next thing i want to display is basically another string saying assessment value of property so i'm just let me just go ahead and copy this whole this whole string here so the next thing i want to display is I'll change it soon. Assessment. Oops. Assessment value of property. Property. T here. T here. And that is going to be equal to the formatted version of assessment value of property. That is going to be given to us when the function is called. And also formatted the same way with the dollar sign in front of it here. And where is this coming from? <laughs> I don't need this. All right. All right, so let's see if everything is looking good. Um, well, first of all, we, we have to break this somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and break this here. I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of this string, type in a backslash here and, and break it. Let me bring this up a little bit to join this line. so I don't have to break this anymore. So concatenate it with a formatted version of the property and then concatenate it with a new line. So let's break this somewhere. Actually, let's break it here again. <laughs> let's break it here again. Type in the backslash and break it. Formatted version of this. All right. And the last thing we want to display after this new line character is, oops, let's go ahead and copy the same value all the way here to the new line character. And paste it and we'll change the value soon we'll change it soon what did I do did I do the right um, actually uh, I, all I need is this all the way from here to here so and uh, the last thing I need to print is basically the property tax so let's change this to property tax Property tax is going to be equal to the, um, just um, 
formatted version of property tax. Formatted the same way. And then once we're done, we will just close this parentheses and then we're done. And everything looks good. We are not exceeding this line, and everything looks formatted well. So print details is basically going to take these arguments and then print them the same way this way. And um, so by default, the print actually no, this is fine. This is going to be good because um, we we've we've it's just one argument. Um, it's one argument, and we've actually put our new line characters there, so it's going to break it where it's supposed to where it's supposed to break it. So we're fine. So over here, we have called these functions. We've stored the values in here. What we have to do after we have the values is basically call the print details function and pass these values in, in them so that the print details function can print them. So the first one is a user value of property. The second one is a user, sorry, the assessment value of property. And the last one is the property tax. Break it somewhere around here backslash enter and then now we're done the only thing is we have just defined these functions although we've called them in main main is a function itself that's that's been defined okay that has been defined that's why we're writing our program all right but the thing is nothing is going to happen until we call main the main function this is just a definition of it this is just what what happens in there although these, these are being called nothing is going to happen when we run the program because we have to call the main function remember main function is the, is the function we have to call when the program starts and it's going to kick everything in. It's going to call all these other functions. But main is, you know, um, basically the, the function, the, the main function that runs when the program starts. And the main function that we should call when the program starts. So let's go ahead and call it because, because nothing's going to happen if we don't call it. So let's call main here. And then now when we run this, let's see what happens. Let's first save this where I save all the Python programs. So on the desktop, create a new folder for property tax and then oops <laughs> well, I'm I'll, I'll move this I'll move this folder later on in chapter 4 let's see uh, it won't allow me to do it here will it? it wouldn't it wouldn't alright so I'll move this let me just save it here I'll move this folder here later on so let me call this property tax dot pi save it here all right let's see uh, what happens all right so it's asking me what's the actual value of the property so it's basically main the main method is working now it's, it's asking for these it's right now here asking for the value of property so we can store it here and then we'll keep on going and then print the details actual value of property let's just use the example they gave us in the question let's use a hundred thousand I mean sorry ten thousand dollars so ten thousand dollars and it says Actual value of property is ten thousand dollars. Like we en we entered, we, we can see it's formatted nicely. The assessment value of property is sixty percent of the ten thousand. We can see it's six thousand here. Its assessment value is six thousand. So six thousand, we got it right. And the property tax is th then seventy-two cents for each hundred dollars. You know, so the tax for the acre of uh, acre assessed at six thousand dollars will be forty-three dollars and twenty cents. And we can see it's correct. So the property the property tax is forty-three dollars and twenty cents. You can try different values just to see. You can try, let's say, $45,000 for the actual value. And the actual value is $45,000. Assessment value is 60% of $45,000, which is $27,000. The property tax is $0.72 cents per every $100 of the assessment value, which is $27,000. Um, times, yeah, basically, we did $0.72 cents for every $100 of the assessment value, and that's $194. All right. The only, the only thing I want to do next is just to create a line break in between the question which is basically asking for the assessment value and so which is basically asking for the actual value of the land and basically the, the result the print result so let's see this is where it's printing the details let's go into the print details function and, and fix that if we can just put a new line character right here after um before it prints the actual value basically basically before it prints the details we can just go ahead and put a new line character here and it's going to move the position from where it's at, at to the next line. So anything that comes after the new line character is going to be displayed on that next line, right? So let's run this, and we can we can tell when we when we enter, let's say ten thousand. We can see that the new line character, the new line is here, 
okay it's basically the interpreter saw this and it moved the position from where it's at here to the next line here and anything that came after that new line character was displayed from here gone another way to do it is to you can not you can decide not to do this so let's go back to how it was type in something here and now it's there, there's no line break and one, another way to do it is when you call the print function here when you call the print function and you type you, you tell it to let's say display something and we I call I run it and type in something we can we can see that it's displaying what you told it to display so you can see over here it's displaying what we told it to display the way the print function works is, is it's going to first of all it's going to display what you told it to display but it's going to end it with a new line character by default the print function always ends with a new line character after it is after it's displayed what you've told it to display it's going to basically create a new line character or move the next line it's going to it because by default the print function ends with a new line character it's going to take the position from where it's at right now here to the next line so anything that comes after this print function is going to be displayed on the next line so after after it's displayed it's going to take the position from here to here right or from here to here anything that comes after after this print function which is this is going to be displayed on that next line so when you call the print function and you tell it to print nothing, it's still going to print nothing. This time around, it's not going to go ahead and print this. It's going to print nothing because you've told it to print nothing. So this is not going to be displayed anymore. It's going to go ahead and print nothing on this line. But because by default, the print function always ends with a new line character or always moves the position from where it's at to the next line, it's going to print nothing, but it's going to move the position from the, from the current line to the next line here. And then anything that comes after this print function, is, which is which is this, is going to be displayed on that next line. So in essence, when you want to create a new line character, well, another way to do it is, is to create a print print function, pass in nothing. It's going to go ahead and print nothing, but by default, the print function ends uh, ends with a new line character. Okay, after it's done printing what you've told it to print. In this case, it's printing nothing. So it's going to go ahead and print nothing, and then move the position from where it's at to the next line. So it's going to print nothing here. Move the position from where it's at to the next line and display anything that comes after that print function in this case this display it on the next line so that's one another way to do it so let's try it out and see if it works all right so what's the actual value of the property let's type let's type in let's say 3400 and we can see that this print function is also taking effect it's it's basically printing an empty line here and then moving because by default the print function ends with a new ends with a new line character it's moving the position from where it's at to the next line. So anything that comes after that print function is displayed on that next line here. So that's another way to do it. So you can either stick with this or you can stick with the new line character um, that we did. Let me undo it to that point. Yeah, you can either stick with that or stick with this. This also does the same thing here. All right. So we're done with this. Um, we're done with this. All right, if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good sleep. Have a nice time. <laughs> and again, take care of yourselves. Um, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, bye-bye.